Hey guys, how's it going? We're in yard sale uh, 10 days ago or so. And in one of the piles was a free pile. And there were two chainsaws in the boxes. It was a tag on them. One said free and had an arrow pointing to the other one that said free. It said both used to run. Well, I hope so. So I threw them in the truck. I figured it would make for a good video. See if we can bring them back to life. So I'm going to go drag those in the garage and see what we can make out of them. Hey, let's open them up, see what we got. This one is a waterlogged. That's not good. They were sitting in the back of my truck, but I didn't think the case would get water in it. An Echo. And it even comes with a nice silky manual. Sometimes you do dumb things, right? See what the has to offer. Another chainsaw with not as much water in it. That one is missing the bar. Yep, no bar. So that might have already been robbed for parts, who knows. So I say we go for the Echo. It's probably a better saw anyway. But why don't we get that stuck in the vise? We'll start looking into it and see what it has to offer us. Right, so let's go put this one in the vise. for good support and let's go relocate you a little bit yeah gonna make you stand up no more sitting for you let's just give her a couple of pulls anyway and see feels decent start popping some stuff off and see what rears it Head. I would suspect more than anything it's going to be a fuel issue. The fuel line is already off of it and I took it apart. Well, that's already been pulled off. So someone definitely has been there ahead of us. Let's go see what our anything in the premix. I don't see anything. Does this have a primer bulb? It does not. You see one? I don't see one. Do you? Uh, let's go pop the plug out of it and see if we have spark. We'll go with that first. Let's see if the plug tool from my other chainsaw is right. And that should be run. And we need somewhere metal on the case. I'm guessing that's aluminum. Let's go give her. Oh yeah. Good. You know what I want to do next, don't you? Let's go dribble a little bit of fuel in it and see what happens. One thing I tell about the saw is its age. I think it's up there because it does not have the uh, brake that kicks in. At least I do not see one. Generally, it's usually on the handle somewhere or on this, where if you were to if the saw were to kick up you would apply the brake and it would stall the saw out. So I do not see that anywhere. Let's lock the throttle on. That is the intake right there under the carb. Let's go give a little shot of fuel. Actually, if you put the plug back in first, that might be a necessity. Uh, might run a little better with that. Where'd you put the wrench? Hiding stuff on me. All right, now let's try it. Leave it locked on, we'll let it go. It'll run. I would have thought I don't have the blade pinched. I would have thought that would have, um, it's tight though. I think they just have the bar set too much. I would have thought that would have spun on us. That might be another issue with it. Let's 
Is this gonna fit for us? Of course not. I'm gonna back off on that chain a little bit. We're gonna go fire it up one more time and we're gonna make sure that the chain spins like it should. Just go pop that bar right off. We'll look inside there. We're gonna need to anyway. Like somebody rounded that one off. There you go. Pretty dirty. You want to pop that off now? You want to wait? I have a feeling that was just too tight, but we're in here. Let's go grab a, looks like a 13 mil. We'll pop the clutch off. We'll take a look at, uh, pop the sprocket off. We'll take a look at the clutch behind it. Get you a little closer. Might be a reverse thread, I'm not sure. Or we just need something with a little bit more snot to it. Eat Mr. More Snot. Try the other way. Yeah. Reverse thread. Let's get in there. Appears to be just metal on metal. Yeah. Guys are standing a little too close. Give me some elbow room. It's dirty. It's just got a big spring around it, and as it accelerates, these weights would fly out. Let's go get a screwdriver. Those weights will fly out and make contact with the drum and make the saw go. Do you feel like they're just metal on metal though? That may be the way it is, or it might be missing something. I'm gonna go take a minute and blow all this crap out of here. And then I might measure the distance across here and the, and the distance across the drum. And as long as they're within an eighth of an inch or so, I think we're okay. If they're uh, three eighths of an inch or a quarter inch away, then uh, maybe all the material burned off of it. There's a reason why the saw was given away for free, right? Missed a spot. Let's go see what we have. Dimensions. I'm sure we could look it up on the internet too, but what fun is that? I don't care what the actual number is, I'm just looking for the maximum width. And then how close is that? I don't see where it would be that much room. There is, what am I at? 60? 20 so there is ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thou roughly. Maybe just the way it is. Let's go take a little bit of time. We are gonna go put it back together. I'm gonna go do a better job at cleaning that crap up. This is the adjuster right here. And what that allows it to do, take the chain off. So that adjuster, it's got a pin in it. The pin grabs the bar. And then you can adjust the tension of the bar up and down by adjusting the screw on the outside here. And then you lock it down with the, the plates that capture everything over here. It also should have the other hole as an oiler it does on this one. This bar you can't flip over. Nay, but that one hole looks like it's been enlarged. I'm not sure what's going on there. That hole got egged out for some reason. Maybe it was loose. See what I'm looking at? Generally they're the same size and you flip the bar over because most of the work, 
most of the work is always on here. You're always pushing against this spot so that the chain is trying to rub into the bar. So the bar wears just as the chain does. And what you're supposed to do is flip it over and run it the other side. But uh, that one hole is really egged out pretty bad. I don't think... Uh, oil is going to pass through there because the inter the inner that's supposed to be open to the channel in here and it's what I'm looking at I don't know if you guys can see it see how it's kind of all the metal is mushed over and if you can see in this one you can actually see through the the crack of it I'm going to take a second clean that up I'm going to take a quick second take a pick around there see if I could open that groove up or not if not, we'll put it so that the so that it's this way, so that the oil can flow into the bar. I'm willing to bet that they probably took the bar and drilled it out to fit on another chainsaw, maybe. Now that I'm thinking about it. Right, so here's the one that I believe is clear. See how you can see the blade down through it? And that's so that's an oil passage open. And maybe we can clear this one out. There we go. So this man can do the same. It's just gonna have a bigger hole. Let's go give her a little. It's not supposed to be open all the way around, I don't think, just on the top side, because you just want the oil to come through into that hole, into this groove, and then as the chain's whipping around, it draws the oil through. That's better. Now we'll put it on. Alright, so we want that to go on again. That's the oil passage where the oil is going to come up through. And that's the adjuster. We want to back that adjuster off. Because we already know it's also bent too. Yeah, this always dropped. Let's go. Yeah. I'm going to buzz that all the way back and use the power of persuasion maybe a little bit to... The reason why I said it was dropping and that it was loose is because that's wobbling. Let's go put it on the top side. See if I can get under it. Give it a little gentle persuasion to the land of straight. That's better. I don't want to do too much where I damage the threads though. I'm trying to push on the threads even. Let's go leave it like that. Probably didn't do anything. <laughs> right, let's go loosen that up. Take it right out and beat it with a hammer if we have to. I don't think it'll work for us. So right, that should be more than enough to put us in the window that we need. That would go on. We have. What do we have? We have our clutch drum and the bearing. Let's go find the bearing. It's sitting right here. I'm going to quickly look under that and see. Do not see any rust or damage. Let's go take that. And we are going to. Give it a little bit of love with the oil. And then we have the thrust washer and the jam nut. Or the nut. Is it a jam nut? Can we when they have, yeah, it's a, I think it is. Sometimes they have a little dents on the outside of it, but this is going to be reverse thread. Yeah, reverse thread would drag. So let's go put our socket back on. And remember, tight is loose. So to loosen it is tightening it. Make sense? All right. Now we're back together. Now we need the bar. Pretty straight. I'm just eyeballing down, eyeballing down the center of it real quick. Get my thumb out of the way. Looks decent. Might be a hair of a tweak to it. We're not 
gonna worry about that. Cause we don't even know if the saw is any good yet, right? Let's make sure we're putting the chain on right. Nope. Cuts like crap like that. There you go. Go we'll get that on the bar. The funny part was he had another chainsaw there. It was a Craftsman chainsaw. And he wanted 50 bucks for that one. And it was like a maybe a $100 saw when it was new. Again, the only problem with this one, I see, it's a, it's a decent saw. It's made, got schmegma in it. It was made uh, in Japan. Not a Chinese one. Matter of fact, it says it right there. It, it doesn't have the brake, the bar brake. So it was made when men were men. I mean, those stinking bar brake. We cut our leg off with pride, I have good stories to tell. So I want to catch the, I went the wrong way with the screw. You're going the wrong way. How many of you were yelling at me that I was doing it wrong? Come on, get off of that. I need the post to go in. Out is for wrong way. Out is for tightening it. I'm just looking to capture that in that one hole. There we go. I'm getting there. Hold on. You try working offside. You try working to your left a foot and a half. I think it's easy, don't you? Right. Yeah. There we go. Now we clicked in. Now we're in on that locating pin. And now we need the cover, which has got another guide on it to go on, along with its hardware. That pinches everything together. We're gonna, I'm gonna snug that down, and then I'm gonna run that screw out so that I can pull that blade down about a half inch or so. Snug all that up. And I am gonna need to access. We're gonna get ourselves a regular screwdriver to deal with that. I'm gonna go run that screw in. In or out. I want to go out, don't I? Nope, in. 50-50 shot, and I get it wrong 90% of the time. And I think you call it a little more than that. Again, before it was just, it was completely tight. And then you want to pull up on the slack of the blade, because that's how the saw is going to rest. You know, once you start pushing in the log, whatever plays in the screws is always going to be that direction. And they do, when they heat up, they, they will tighten up some. A little bit tighter than that, though. We're gonna call it right there. So let's go back you up. Tighten them up. Oh yeah, it's not that size either. Let's see how well I am changing bits behind your back one-handed and tight is tight you know good enough for testers purposes let's go pop it back in the vise and make sure that all does what it's supposed to do when we put a little bit of gas in it all right let's go put a little bit of fuel in it try it again and make sure everything is that might have been a tad too much pulling nine thousand times a Kill, clean it. Say flooded much. I'll go with that. Still kind of questioning those brake shoes, the clutch shoes, but let's. I don't know if I just want to go try putting some fuel in the tank and see if it just comes back to life or do we just tear right into that carb? 
Uh, let's see if we get lucky. I know every time we do that, it doesn't happen. We're going to go put that fuel line back on. And dump a little bit of fuel, see if it primes itself, and see if it'll just go. Some of the good stuff. In it. Watch it come right out the other side. It's half a tank. I should have. I should have done now that I just thought about it. Just looked inside there. The there will be a fuel line going in that's kind of on a float, floating around that you have a tendency to break off. Now I think about it, of course. Yeah, they have a tendency of splitting off the end and then it just sucks air. I'll take a quick peek. You can see it. Guys, a little too close again, shaking you. Break it neither though. I could feel on the end of there. I was gonna pull it out just so you could see it, but I don't want to damage it. Let's throw that cap back on. I wonder if I could pressurize it a little bit and have it just push through right now. Let's give that a shot. See if we can make a mess. I'm gonna put some pressure in the fuel tank a little bit. It'll leak like a sieve, so it's not, it'll get to like 2 PSI. Let's see if we can push it out that fuel line, push it through. That was smart. Yeah. It's not going. <laughs> you impressed? I am. I'm not expecting it to, but let's give her a little. See if it'll prime itself. fuel coming up whether it's a uh, deal with the fuel lines or the carb itself we need to dig in it's got two screws holding it down well let's get those lines out of the way if we can shouldn't be that hard they were just uh, off of there let's uh screwdriver maybe for that bottom one Two screws, the choke lever, and then the throttle lever. Sometimes they could be bare, sometimes they're easy. Let's hope for easy. Get in there. I should come with a little choke lever. side I'm looking trying to look at the throttle right now I'm trying to these are air fuel mixtures on the side there they should just be able to pop right out but I'm looking at however the throttles held I don't see now I see so you can slide that out of there it's generally a there'll be a combination of which of rotating into play. Let's uh, turn the throttle. See if it gives, opens the window. There we go. That's what we got to do. So that's our prize. I should be able to blow into the fuel tank. It's just a flow and a return. got a lot of restriction to it and that one I'm not gonna be able to get on at all and I may take an air gun 
and make a mess. Let's see if I can do a little blown bubble so that side is clear. The return on the other hand, they really seem to have a lot of drag on it. It's a Feels like it's got a check valve in it. Let's take the saw off the bench and we will turn our attention to that carb. We'll pop that carb open. Let's try working on a metal tray. I don't know if that's going to be brighter or it's going to be better for us. You think with or without? Got a lot of reflection on that one. Let's try it with the tray. I've done it on the black before and it's kind of bleached out the. Expect that we're going to find diaphragms that are just all hardened up. I'm going to do that on for a second. That is the the valves, the internal valves. This is one, and it's laying way in the wrong direction. So that's not blocking any port off. That one doesn't look too decent. It, it's there's a pulse that comes from it, from the uh, crankcase, and it allows the fuel. It it fires a diaphragm, which essentially is the fuel pump. Well, these are the little one-way doors, but that one, first of all, it's super stiff, and it's, it's see how it's laying down. That is not sealing against the, the two ports. That was like that. So you got two ports that fuel flows through. It's a pulses, but that's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. That's one issue. Let's go see the actual. wager that this is going to be uh, stiff as a board too. It actually floats pretty good. I'm surprised. Usually that thing is just hard as a rock. And then there is a needle that throttles how much fuel comes through. It's spring loaded under a pin. And it's right there. So that's what that that allows fuel to come and go in and out of it. I'm gonna look real quick underneath the magnifying glass. I'm gonna check out the filter and a couple of things. Looks okay. I am going to That's the needle, so you actually see it moving. I'm gonna push an air through it. I don't want to remove that. It seems fine. It, it was really clean. Johnny, just take that screw up. It's a bitch to get that little spring back in there. The gasket is gone. Hopefully I have something laying around that we can replace that with but I think again most of it I think this the reason why I wasn't pumping any fuel is because of that one right there I would call it I would call that our uh, our suspect got a couple of kits alongside me let's go see if get the bits that are correct that's an old one that was taken out here out crunchy that is staying in one position the new one the magnets holding it 
the new one is. That one's very soft. So actually that's still good. We are going to need that gasket. So that kit's not it. Not it. One, two, three, four. You see any pieces in there that might look like it? That looks like it's for something else, huh? No. That's not going to do it. Gotta look some more. Well, I found the gasket that I tore. That should be that one. But I still need to find this. Don't have one. What do you think the chances are that this miscellaneous carburetor that was up in there will have the right one? And it'll be good. Not the same. So unfortunately, I do not have a kit for this. So I am going to just going. I took a little bit of time and I kind of worked these so that they kind of lay flat. Kind of know what we need, but let's see if they'll perform enough so that we can get this arm running. Just for the sake of having fun on a video, how's that? They're not going to have any longevity. Just because. Because eventually it's just going to go right back to the way it was. Okay. Let me try getting one tomorrow. But I'm not opposed to putting it together today so that I can at least give her a try. Take a minute and clean that surface up a little. Sometimes an original carb, you go on eBay, you can find a carb for 10, 15 bucks and a kit can cost you that. So that might be a way to go too. Possibly might still have a problem with that one return on that tank. It seemed like it was fairly restrictive. It may be that way on purpose. I don't know. Just don't know. I seem to remember somebody mailed me a couple of kits. I went go looking for them. That might have been the ones that were already in there, though. Or I might just be imagining it. Sometimes that happens, too, you know. Shall we? Noise alert. Go put your finger in the hole. Clean up this town. I'm not liking the return on that. Just feels like it has a ton of drag. So let's go pull that pull start off. I want to clean in there anyway. I just, I get a vibe that this line where it might go through it, it might be pinched somewhere. Might be. Feels like the pull start probably broke loose in its lifetime too, and the stroke of it seems really shallow. You get about 18 inches of pull on the thing. Three screws, that's it. This might not even get us access to where we want to be. They're the same size. Yep. Going in. Maybe. That, there's the fourth one. I knew it didn't seem right.
let's go do some cleaning up inside there too. I don't know if I can see the lines. I can. Clean up. Watch your eyes. Fuel or water? That's pushing fuel up when I blow in a certain area in here. That's weird. Why is that doing that? We're going to go find out in a minute. Let's go lay it on its side. So I was wondering why when I blew air in here to blow it out, it started pushing fuel out. It just didn't make any sense to me. So I started poking around. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this too. Hold on. Let me get you in the right spot. So here's the fuel line coming out of the tank. And I was poking at it. And it had some glue on there. Somebody put some glue around there. And if you notice, it really, the line is not sealed to the tank. It's flopping around inside there. So what happened was I was just kind of blowing air in there. I believe it was I was pressurizing the tank and it was pushing it up and out of the system. So that seal is crap too. You lay the saw upside down and the gas will come out of it. I It might be just a single. I do not see a return back to the tank anywhere where that may go off to the oiler. I'm not sure on that either. Because there's that other line, right? There's the line in question right there. And it shoots. That's it right there. And where does that go? Looks like it just ends up right. It's right into the body of the saw. And it's ending right there because it does not move at all. I'm going to blow that out a little bit. Maybe we're just going to put it back together and see what we get. Like a plan? Let's see if we can get it all back together again. It was like that. So we need to give it full throttle. Full throttle for the throttle. Let's see if we get the choke out of our way for a second. Come on. Come the way. Get in there. You're almost there. I can see it. There you go. Let's see if you can drop it down. Line all the holes up. There's it. There we go. Let's see if we can get the choke back over to where it belongs. It was something like that once we put the top screws in. Right? Is that how it was? Or am I 180 out? Should I be like that? I think I should be like that. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. We need... Where'd those parts go? What'd you do with them? Where's the two screws? Where'd you hide them? I don't see them. they're in a little magnetic tray that you took off the bench so we want was it like that or was it like that do you remember you know what's gonna matter for is the air cleaner when the air cleaner goes on and... well, that would be wrong I think Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Actually, one of them should have a shoulder on it? No. Did 
getting that screw started, so. All right, now let's go see. I was right. I was right that I was wrong. What do you think the chances are? Some of you said slim to none. Let's make sure that that choke is in the center. I would think that would have had a washer or a bushing in it. Let's go check and make sure I'm not forgetting something. Nope, I don't see one. I might feel if I tighten down on that. It does not seem right, does it? If I tighten that down. That's really going to be. I don't remember seeing anything come out of that when we took it apart, did you? But I do believe that's missing some kind of uh, ring that was on there. Some of you are saying, I saw it when you took it apart. Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. That might be. I'm gonna go pick those lines on there. I'm gonna quickly pick this up, make sure I did not drop a little tiny like looking washer ring looking thing. I don't think so. I don't think I did. Again, I'm sure somebody's been in here before we were because there was a, it was caca on that fuel line. Yeah, I wasn't liking that. So I took a lock washer and opened it up to, to fill in the gap that's in there. So it, the plate should still be able to move and I should be able to crank down fully on the screw. Yeah, let's see how that works out for us. Now this one we could tighten down all the way because it doesn't matter. And this one now has a bushing in it. That might be good enough. Important thing is, is yeah, you know, the carb is tight down to the base. Yet the choke can still move. I'm happy with that. We'll move forward. Let's get that pull start back on there. Dribble a little fuel and see if it'll prime itself is pretty much what we're looking for. I definitely suspect that one check valve though. That made me very suspect the way it was when we first took it apart, the way it was leaning. Yeah, what do you think? Right about there, good for you to see? Back you up a little bit. All right. I guess I could take the light off my forehead. Get the glasses off. Let's give her a couple of shots. That's too much again, too. Everything work? Yeah. Choke works. Let's, uh, let's just give it full throttle. Let's we'll try it again. I might. What might I do? Don't know what to do. How about if we pop the fuel line off from the tank and we force feed? It is not allowing it to go. So 
See if it'll fire up. I think the carbs in the the problem's in the carbs still. That's oil. What am I doing? What am I? Doing? <laughs> Wait a minute. I want to dump fuel down it, not oil. The fuel line has fuel up to there. That was funny. Won't run in oil. That'll smoke. It did draw it down. Fire it up again. I'm watching the, the fuel level on the line. Seems like it draws it. Let's go and back out the air fuel mixes. Who knows? I, I left them alone, but someone could have. Let's go to the top one, one, half, one, half. Yeah, they felt like in the window where they should be. That line is out of fuel again. It did draw it through though. So the fuel went somewhere. Let's see. Fill the line up again. You guys can see it. it's about a foot up right now it's out of your out of your eyesight but let's shove that in the light and right now the fuel is right up about there right there and we'll fire it up and see if it draws the fuel through It is taking the fuel. I'm gonna run it with the choke on some. It is taking the fuel. Yeah, that's way too much. it used all the fuel up so it is processing the fuel but it just seems like it's way too lean what do you want to do probably put the fuel line back on we'll leave the choke where it is prime it we'll see if we can start sucking from the tank and doing the same if so we're going to play with the air fuel mix a little bit it just seems like it's way out of whack and it can be way out of whack just because of the components that are on the inside that we know are iffy or it could have a uh, a crankcase leak. A crankcase leak uh, around the 
on a two-stroke, you use the bottom of the engine, the underside of the piston is like a sealed chamber. On both sides, if any, if the seal leaks on any side of the crank, it sucks air through there and it, it, it throws, it, the, it leans the mix way out, essentially is what happens. I'm gonna open the door, let the air change in here, and uh, I'm gonna put some more fuel in there and we'll give it a shot. All right, let's see if it primes itself. We're gonna sneak a little in there, under the choke. We'll leave that choke right where it was because it seemed like it would kind of run there. see the fuel yeah, I was just in the high that's why I could actually see the fuel getting uh, drawing into the carburetor so it is now functioning I want to go a little bit richer on the low side first we try to find a window where the high will run then I'll adjust the left Pushing a lot of crap out of the muffler. Try that again. It will run, but we need a carb kit for it. It's just not maintaining the fuel flow going through it, it seems like. But better getting into, into the realm of where it'll run.
<laughs> I have it backwards. Yeah, it just has no low circuit. We're going to go pop the air cleaner back on for drag. I don't think it's going to, it's not going to fix the problem. I know it's not. I wish it would, but I know it's not. Let's go fire it up. Nope. We may not need choke. Let's go see. Well, the oil works, I can tell you that. It's uh, definitely doing its thing. I mean, maybe a little on the too much side. Somebody might have just put motor oil in there too, which is thin. Hey, if you put like motor oil or uh, a light oil in it, it pumps it through real fast. So, unfortunately, that's about as far as we can go without doing a kit. I think what's happening is those little check valves that are in there, those little valves that we were playing with. So when it's running real fast, they have enough to kind of go and, and flow and have a good fuel flow through it. But when it goes back to an idle and they're, and they're moving slower, they're just not sealing off enough to do what they need to do. That's a guess on my part, but I think that's what's happening. So, Well guys, I think that's gonna be about it. Um, I may order a kit. We may make a part two on this and see if we can kind of figure it out. But uh, I got a lot of stuff going on right now and I wanted to make sure I had a video for you for Sunday get to go play with something i wish it got further along than what it did but you know sometimes it's just the way things go so with that i'm gonna go sign off now and uh maybe we'll see if i can go find a carp kit and we'll do it again but uh for now i just got to the point where it'll run and uh you know maybe a little education on how the thing works so with that till the next one gentlemen i will see you later i also try and cut something with it right Why do you need a barrel cut in half? That's why. Sharpen blade.